This is the hot cold water experiment, or the co cold hot water experiment, whichever way around you want to think about it, really. So what you're gonna need is some very hot water, okay? So this can be our very hot water. Make sure it's not so hot it's gonna scold you, but hot enough so you can actually bear putting your hand in it, okay? And you're gonna need to keep your hand in it for a little while, so make sure it's hot enough for you to easily put your hand in, but as hot as you can bear it, without hurting you, of course. Other bottle, I want you to have cold water. Now you may not actually take it from bottles, I'm using it now in front of you in bottles. So hot water, as hot as I can bear, cold water out of the fridge, really cold water. Again, as cold as you can bear. If you make it too cold, you might feel it uncomfortable too. Once you see what I'm gonna do, you'll see what I mean. So as hot as you can bear, as cold as you can bear, freezing water out of the fridge. What I first want you to do is get three bowls in front of you. Now, some I'm actually using three bowls at the same size because that's what I happen to have to hand. But also, I'm thinking of the size of my hands. I want to get my hands in easily. What I, what I want you to think about, when you choose the bowls you're going to use, you don't have to use them all the same like this. You could have one in the middle. The one in the middle, you've got to get both hands in, no problem. So it's got to be big enough for you to put both hands in. The others, you could, if you want, just use smaller bowls because you've only got to put one hand in each. I'm just using three that same size. But again, once you see what I'm gonna do, you'll choose the bowls to suit you, okay? So let's put some hot water first into this bowl here. Now I'm only gonna put, say, about a third, okay? So about a third. Now technically, being scientists, of course, we should measure it exactly, but I'm just gonna estimate. So just put about a third, okay? So I'm measuring it from the bottle, that's roughly a third, maybe a little bit more, maybe about a third. Remember it was full up, so I've taken about that much. And I'm gonna do the same for the freezing cold water. So about a third. This is one of the reasons I use a bottle because I can see from the bottle roughly how much I've taken out. Okay. So a little bit more. So what you want is the same in each, okay? And again, I'm only estimating it right now. So. Hot water, cold water. I want you to pour them both into the central bowl. And by the way, I want you to do this all in one go like I'm doing it, because of course things are changing their temperature all the time. The hot water is cooling down and the cold water is warming up slowly. So you've got to do this fairly swiftly. So now we've poured them together. Now, now I want you to pour the rest of the water out of your bottle in there. So. If you think about it, we put a third in before, and now we're putting two thirds, so we should end up about roughly the same in all three, in the way I'm doing it. Of course, if you're using different sized bowls, you may not be able to fit that much in anyway, and that's okay, you don't need to. You need to be able to have enough water in each bowl so you can put your hands right under the surface of the water, so that'll give you a clue of how much you actually need, okay? So enough water so you can put your hands under the water. Okay, so we're finished with that, I'm happy with that. So, freezing cold water in there, very hot water in there, and of course a mixture of the two in here, so that's gonna be somewhere between their two temperatures, isn't it? Now of course what temperature that is will depend on how hot they were and how cold they were between them, because we mix them together. So the first thing I want you to do is put both hands into the one in the middle, and just notice right under the water, fingers especially, and I want you to notice the temperature that you can feel. Okay, just notice the temperature, does it feel hot, cold? It won't feel hot or cold, it'll feel somewhere between the two. It might feel slightly warm, it might feel slightly cold. It will depend on how hot and how cold the water were that you mixed in the start, but it just doesn't really matter right now. I just want you to notice what temperature it is, okay? Just for a few seconds. Take your hand out. Now, I want you to put one hand in the hot water. Remember, you've got to be able to put your hand in this, so cold enough to do it, but hot as you can bear easily, and as cold as you can bear easily for that one. And what I want you to do is leave both hands in here, one there, one there, for about three minutes, okay? For about three minutes. That's why they can't be too bad for you to bear. So that's got to be hot enough for you to bear for three minutes. That's got to be cold enough for you to bear for three minutes, but I want you to make them as hot and as cold as you can bear, okay? So three minutes. Once you've done that, after three minutes, take your hands out, both of them, put them back in the middle bowl, and notice what you notice. Hopefully you noticed what I noticed. 
When I take my hands out, which are now, that feels quite hot, that feels pretty cold, put them back in. Hmm, that's interesting. When I started off, this water felt the same temperature to both hands. Now, it feels cold to my right hand and pretty warm to my left hand. So the hot hand that came out the hot water, it actually feels slightly cold in here now. And that freezing cold, cold hand came out of that water, this water feels hot. So it feels both hot and cold. One to each hand. What's going on? So why did it feel different? One to one hand, one the other. Remember, it felt colder to this hand, hotter to that hand. What's going on? Well, you've got to remember that all over your body, you've got heat sensors. Some people call them thermosensors. Some people call them thermoreceptors. Thermo means heat, of course. So heat sensors all over your body. Some are good at sensing coldness, some hotness or heat. But you can't actually sense particular temperatures. All you can sense is differences in temperatures. Now it turns out that if your hand touches something that is hotter than your hand, it feels hot because the heat flows from the hot thing into your cooler hand. This is according to a rather interesting rule in science called the second law of thermodynamics. Now the second law of thermodynamics says that heat always flows from a place of warm, hot, hotter temperature to a place of lower temperature. So we put our hand in something hot, it feels hot because the heat is flowing from the hot thing into our cooler hand. Of course, think about the other way around. If you put your hand in something cold, it's colder than your hand, now it feels cold because heat is flowing from your warm hand into the cold thing. So your hand senses differences. And if you think about that, if you put your hands, whatever temperature they are, into a liquid or something which is actually the same temperature as your hands, what do you think you're going to notice? That's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, back to our experiment here. So when you put your both hands into the same water, the temperature difference, my hands are both about the same temperature to start with, aren't they? When you put them into the same temperature liquid, they're both sensing about the same change. That water to my, to my hand felt very slightly cold, very slightly, because to do with the water temperatures I started with. So very slightly cold, just a bit. Then I put, took them out, so my hands are still the same temperature. I put that into the really hot water, that into the really freezing water. And again, it felt hot and cold for the reasons I've just said. After about three minutes, that hand has heated up because it's in the hot water, okay? That hand has cooled down because it's in the cold water. So now my temperature, my skin has changed. Okay, and you, by the way, you might have noticed if the temperatures were big differences here, if it was very hot water, you might have noticed your hand actually started going a pinky color, okay? And that hand probably went a bit more pale. If you looked at your fingertips, for example, you might see it's gone a bit pale. You probably notice when you run around a lot, you get a little bit red, don't you? And on a cold day, your skin goes a bit pale. One of the reasons for that is called thermoregulation. And what's happening is your body is trying to control the temperature. And when you put your hand in something very hot, what happens is your body is a bit worried, you're going to overheat, and it tries to get rid of the heat. One way it does that, it makes sure all the little veins swell up. And so you get what we call vasodilation, they get bigger, and more blood flows through. It's like a radiator, we've turned up the flow through the radiator, and it's ho your body's hoping the heat will go out through your hand. And so that's why it got a bit red. And you also got to be used to the temperature. Those sensors got used to the temperature, and so it probably didn't feel, feel quite as hot, even though it was actually cooling down a bit anyway, the water itself. But you wouldn't have felt it so hot because you got used to it. The other way around here, you were getting used to the coldness. That's why it probably didn't feel quite as cold, although the water is warming up a bit. But it felt cold and stopped feeling quite as cold because your sensors got used to it. But here, your cold hand was in freezing cold water and your body was worried that it was going to cool you down right in the main part of your body. So what your body does here in your nerves, they make all those little veins close up. We call it vasoconstriction. So all those little veins got a bit thinner so not so much blood can flow through. So it won't take the coldness into your body if you like. And that's why your hand got more pale. But either way around, this hand got very cold and this hand got very hot. Now remember, we can only sense temperature change. So when we put them back and put in a hot hand into Cool, what feels like now colder water because the temperature of the water is colder than that hand and that freezing cold hand is going into the same water but that water is actually warmer than that hand so that's why that feels warmer to that hand and colder to that hand
So what about a few variables you could consider? Well, I'm sure you can think of some. I'll just give you one or two to think about. What about the amount of time? If we repeat the whole thing again, use same temperature water and all the rest of it, what about if I vary the amount of time that I leave my hands in here? I'll give you some clues about this already, actually. But supposing I left my hands in only for, say, one minute instead of all three as I asked you to do originally. Or maybe you leave your hands in for a lot longer. Though do remember, of course, the longer you leave it, the, that water will cool down and that water will slowly warm up a bit. But nevertheless, what about if you did it for longer or shorter? That's one thing to think about straight away, isn't it? What about the volumes of the water we're using? Because I've got you know, about the same amount of water in each one. What about if you were using much smaller bowls and you hardly had any water in the two at the side, say, and more water in that one? So the volumes are different. What about trying other bits of your body? Well, of course, I've used hands here because I've got two hands. Of course, it does come to mind. What about your feet? So how about doing the same experiment, this time with your feet? OK, so obviously, probably best to put this on the floor. You sit in a chair and put your feet in and see if you notice any differences. Of course, you may need bigger containers because your feet are probably a bit bigger than your hands. So you may need bigger containers for your feet. But try your feet. And of course, don't forget you've got things like elbows and knees. You have to be a bit of a gymnast to do those, of course. But maybe you can think of some other things. Mm-hmm.